in the real world, a long line of people do is social proof that a lot of people must know something good's going on. And as long as you can see where the queue is going, you too can have confidence that that queue must be lead to something incredible. With the exception of buying coffee, I have no interest in queuing for coffee. I want coffee, but I do not wish to queue for it. I would rather be able to send a text message, a telegram bot. I'd like to be able to say something into a text message. It give me back a Stripe checkout. I can pay for it with my Apple Pay and then just turn up, pick it up. That's what I want. And before we talk about how I build that, I need to address a cultural concern that's already immediately percolating in the minds of some American viewers. You might be wondering what this is. This object that I'm holding in the rest of the world is what we call a small size. Anyway, I wanna walk through a demonstration of uh, what we can do uh, with a text chat, whether it's SMS, whether it's Telegram, any sort of chat system that you wish to give your customers, could we let people buy coffees and teas, etc. Uh, so I've typed in two flat whites and a tea, please. That's headed off to magical automation land. What we should get back is thank you and a link to um, to uh, our checkout. And I'm just going to go to uh, to uh, Safari specifically so that we get Apple Pay. Uh, but you can see over here that it has picked up from the text the two products I ordered, the two flat whites, the tea, it's given them price. I've priced tea appropriately at $2 because I refuse to believe that any business should charge for hot water in a tea bag. And so, uh, and of course, you know, however you wish to set up Stripe, you can then make uh, additional suggested orders as well. We could then use Apple Pay. Uh, I'm on my phone at this point, of course, not normally on a laptop, and uh, I can pay with Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, and I am done, I would then head back to, uh, to Stripe. I get a text message. It now knows who I am because of my Stripe checkout. Um, and uh, it says, man, I'm ready to go. I've ordered. I sent a text message. And of course, on the back end, uh, the coffee shop would pick that up and go, oh, Nick Williams, what a hero. Let's get his coffee ready before he gets here. This is the future I want. And uh, are we going to make it? irrespective of whether my local coffee shop will actually uh, implement this for me. Let's have a look at what we've got. This is going to be a relatively short video because I'm all just going to walk through uh, the idea of the implementation and then a future video will make it long and uh, build it from scratch. So to get this working, I've got a very simple uh, Stripe setup here. I've got um, Stripe uh, uh, with a, a small product catalog. Um, Missing, of course, is all the variations of small, large, uh, different milks, etc. But uh, the idea is, is perfectly valid here. And if I wish to add another product, um, we could do that. So uh, if we go and add another product, um, cake, uh, and of course, uh, we'll have to charge an appropriate amount of money for cake. I do like the idea of a recurring bill for cake. That sounds excellent. But for today, we'll add, um, we'll just add cake. Uh, could I have cake please let's see if it picks that up and sells it to me open that up and cake so not only have we organized this with stripe but stripe is actually uh, a live product catalog of things that are available so let's look at how we've got this working um, and it kind of in, in make.com which is an automation platform that connects to telegram uh, could connect to Trello or uh, Twilio or uh, some other sort of SMS system. Um, and of course, we're connecting to Stripe and then we're sending text messages back. Uh, pretty handy place to implement something like this. And it comes in uh, two parts. One where we construct the order and we receive the text message and then we uh, send back the link to the person so that they can pay. And once they have paid, then there is a second uh, 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 make.com scenario where we receive the payment information and send on that message saying, awesome. And of course, that's where we would also perhaps send a, a message off to the, the, uh, the, the cafe itself so that they know what to actually make. Otherwise, we've just collected money and no one's going to make any coffee, which isn't going to solve any of my problems. So the rest of this video, I'm going to walk through uh, how I built this. Um, and if it's interesting, leave a comment and I'll, I'll make a longer how to build it yourself 
video. Uh, so we'll go into each of these in more detail. Um, this is a demonstration that I've, I've wired up to Telegram. Uh, so we're using the Telegram bot and uh, they're very simple to make. You could, of course, uh, wire it up to uh, as, as SMS number uh, using a service like uh, Tra uh, Twilio, um, which provides uh, SMS numbers. And uh, so that's, that's another option. This little layer here is uh, where we're going to pull in the current products that are available. I mean, mixed, myth, mixed ideas of whether I should do it this way uh, or whether it should be done in a more uh, optimized way. But for this purpose, this is looking really nice. And you can see how quickly it responds to new prices or new products. We pull in all the products that are available in my store and, um, and, and, and we get those. So we can sort of see here that uh, it collected um, the products including our cappuccinos, a flat white, uh, my tea, and last but not least, our brand new cake, which is very exciting. Delicious too. Uh, we iterate over those so that we can pull them out. Now, why are we doing this? What's next? Uh, we'll go to what's next and then that might explain why we have done these sequences. Because well, now what we need to be able to do is use a little bit of the new AI that's available in the world. I'm using Claude. Uh, from Anthropic. You could probably use OpenAI, you could use uh, Llama 3. Um, you probably want the, the, the bigger models so that they don't make as many mistakes with such an important thing as, as interpreting people's uh, instructions for an order. So I'm using uh, the new Sonnet from Claude, which is uh, very nice. Um, and I'm, we'll come back to this in a second. This is some examples. Let's go to the bottom. And uh, you can see here, you're very clever extracting copy and food orders from an incoming SMS or text message. Available products. Now I've got here a variable. So instead of hard coding all my available products, I've actually made this uh, dynamic. So every time a new message comes in, I recalculate all the products that are available. And more importantly, or in addition to their names, also what is the Stripe product or price ID so I know what to charge them. Um, I've got some ideas of milk, so I haven't really implemented that yet. In fact, I'm gonna remove that as not relevant in the current demonstration. Um, you will extract the different product orders and how many they want. You will return a JSON object, which is like a structure that we like to use in, in Make, uh, with the required key of action that either is an order or a do nothing. If someone just wants to chit chat, uh, apparently we at least want to not accidentally try to sell them something. We should just do nothing. And uh, if, the, if they do not really want a container purchase request, if they're just saying something nice, then just return action. Now, what does an order look like? Because that's what we really want to know. So I've given some examples earlier on of what an order looks like. A small skinny cap, which is an Australian terminology for a, uh, a light milk cappuccino. Um, small, earlier demonstrated, uh, it is a smaller size. Uh, you probably can't even get this container in the 48 States of uh, America, um, the, the lower 48. And uh, uh, nonetheless, a small skinny cap is the order that came in. And interesting enough, uh, Claude and the other allies know what that is and will sell me a cappuccino. Or at least I hear as an example of what structure I want the AI to return to me if it was a small skinny cap. And of course, if it was two small skinny caps, I'd want two um, and some sort of price information. Um, and uh, Here's an example of where I don't want to receive an order. So if someone just says, thanks, then I want to receive this, this JSON action, nothing. Um, now, finally, the actual uh, message that we want to process is the one that came from Telegram. And so we'll pass that in. And then it would be the uh, AI's responsibility to add that final message of the interpretation of what it is they're going to order. Let's have a look at what that looked like uh, on that last one. And uh, we have a look and down here. We can see that it returned this, uh, this JSON object. It's a string, it's not yet JSON, but it's a, sorry, it's a JSON string. Uh, and it has that it's an order and what are the things that they wanted to buy. The most important part is this ID that came from Stripe because this is what we're gonna give back to Stripe to say this is what they wanna order. The fact that we've included cake is, is by the by, it's more for, clarification of the human on one cake. But this is what we're going to give back to Stripe to build that, that checkout. We then, uh, so now you can sort of see where that came from. Um, 
you can see that, uh, uh, oh, I got rid of those, I didn't save it. Let's do that one more time. Um, you have, um, what do we do? Uh, we're looking at the messages, my mistake. I'm sorry for being confusing. Um, now I've lost track of what I was going to show you. Oh, I've now remembered. I'm embarrassing myself. Where did this message come from? We said it came from here. Where did the products come from? This variable there. The products came from this text aggregator. So uh, in order for the structured data that came from the Stripe API to go into our, our AI, we need to turn it into like flat text. And so um, this is what I used a text aggregator for to sort of convert all our product catalog into something flat and simple that the AI can pick up. And so the AI just took this, uh, figured out what the human's message was that they wanted a cake and mapped it to this thing. And you can be quite flexible. Uh, you would play around with this and you'll find uh, what works. Um, what else? I mean, heck, you could have uh, pictures. And if someone says, what's the cake look like? You can send back a picture of cake. A lot of fun things you can do. Okay, so now we've got the text that came out of the order and we now need to want to turn it into uh, a bundle so that we can play with it. So now we've turned that JSON string into a, a make.com bundle. Now we can iterate. Uh, this order only had one, but you can imagine there might've been many items. So we want to iterate over that um, and we want to then turn it back into something. What are we turning it back into? This was a little tricky because the Stripe API doesn't want to receive a JSON object. The Stripe API uh, comes from an era of uh, it wants a nice form, and this is a little difficult to read, but it wants uh, this sort of key value and key value, uh, where are we up to? There, and key value. So it wants these sorts of uh, key equals value, key equals value, and key equals value, and key equals value. It wants that uh, to be sent to it. That was a little irritating quite frankly. So nonetheless, uh, we need to turn those products that people want to order into that key value. And that's what I'm using another text aggregator for to build out the, uh, the structure that the Stripe API wants of this line item, zero price uh, ID, and how many they want. And then we send that off to the Stripe API and what it gives back is a URL. There's a lot of things here that you don't need to worry about. The thing we want at the bottom is this URL. That URL is what we're going to give to the prospective buyer that wants their small skinny cappuccino. And that's what I sent back in the text message. This URL here was that URL there, and then we sent it to the Telegram. Uh, or if you're using SMS, you then send them a text um, with the same sort of information. If you're doing a text, you might want to minify the URL as well, so it's small instead of huge, uh, and we're good to go. That was step one. That's how I got the message back with the Stripe checkout. The final part, step two, is after the person pays. Uh, now, if you're new to Stripe, you might be wondering, well, how did I pay without, did I actually pay? No, it's in a test mode. So when you play with Stripe, uh, set it up for the first time, uh, you can be in a test mode uh, where you can build things out and check that it all works, and then you can promote that to production um, and, uh, and charge real money for real coffee. Um, so that's, uh, that's Stripe. And there's a lot to learn about Stripe and there's a lot to like about it. When uh, they successfully pay, they will be redirected to a URL, which will be another, uh, another make scenario. So here we are, uh, the request comes in um, and all we get back was, was the, uh, the, the Stripe checkout session, um, which uh, doesn't contain any information. We have to go and fetch that information. So. We take that ID, we go back to Stripe, and this could be a minute or two, five minutes later, however long it takes for the person to actually decide to you know, press pay, you know, go, press okay on the, on the pay, or whether they put their credit card details in, whether they use uh, Google, you know, Apple Wallet, um, et cetera. And so then we, uh, we come in here, uh, and we basically just take the, uh, um, uh, um, value and uh, and go and request it. Oh, not actually sure. So nonetheless, uh, so then we get that back. We get all the details about the purchase and um, 
and then we say thank you etc etc and that didn't look as right as it should be uh, so we'll fix that when we do the, the big video for the walkthrough um, but nonetheless uh, we say thank you and then we uh, send a text message back going we've got your name now um, and uh, thank you very much so that's a nice little bit of personalization that uh, even though they never told us their name we got it from the fact that they paid the billing details and that is the walkthrough of how you could build um, especially uh, you, how you could build a text-based um, purchasing system for any set of products, really. Um, it could be a big, long set of products, and the AI will match the words that they want and uh, match it to products. You could certainly make it more complicated to make clarifying, and there's all sorts of chatbot-type flows that are available. And the ability to make a chatbot do this sort of thing is, is only getting uh, uh, more advanced, uh, and there's certainly things we can talk about in future videos. Now, finally, if you are the coffee shop that uh, is at the bottom of my office building and you would like to implement this, please, please, please uh, let me know. Otherwise, it's just me talking about you on YouTube to strangers. So let's not have that sort of relationship. Um, for everyone else, uh, hopefully this is really interesting. I think there's a lot to be gained from this idea of, of a natural language, um, uh, sort of a natural language uh, text of, of what people want, matching it to structured data. In this case, uh, we had Stripe, um, and then generating, in this case, a, uh, a Stripe checkout. So people could pay and, and, and it's done. I think this is incredible. Um, if you have any other ideas of what we should build, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, see you in the next one.